Welcome to the Will Leach Show. I am the aforementioned Will Leach. Thank you for coming by and saying hello to me today. Today's show is about fandom. In 1982, the Cardinals All-Star was Ozzie Smith. They played in Bush Stadium. Their manager was Whitey Herzog. And their owner was a crusty old beer baron named Gussie Bush, who always wore a cowboy hat, even though I was pretty sure he'd never actually seen a cow. Today, all of those people are gone. They have nothing to do with the Cardinals anymore. But I'm still here and stuck with them. The most fundamental mistake we make when we talk about our sports teams is that we pretend they are real. Sure, the corporations are real. It cost me a hundred bucks to get into an Islanders game last night, and I'm not even sure Islanders is an actual team. But everything else about them is merely temporary. Everyone involved with every team, they're going to be gone someday. They're all just caretakers. Their job is to keep the lights on and not leave the place worse than what they found it. We're still going to be here in 20 years, though. We're the only constant they have. The fans are the only people who count. But it's funny how it doesn't feel that way, right? Every player and coach and owner, they're always talking about fans like they're rampaging barbarians at the gate who couldn't possibly understand how hard their jobs are. You want hard? Try actually being a Browns fan. A few years ago, a Browns fan demanded his obituary notes say that he wanted his pallbearers to all be members of the Browns so they, quote, could let him down one last time. Since that guy died, the Browns have won two games. Most Browns fans probably find him lucky. At least he's f***ing dead. But those who work in sports ask as if activists were the burdens rather than the reasons any of them have such a ridiculous job in the first place. I mean, look at every commercial featuring a sports fan. They clearly think we're morons. And you know what, maybe we are. We think about our teams all day, every day, and unlike them, we don't even get paid for it. But the only way that sports can exist is because of fans. Sports, they're pointless wastes of time. They're diminishing of psychic energy. They're literally tens of thousands of hours that have nothing to do with our lives at all. Just a way to thoughtlessly whittle away precious time until we die. Are any of us going to be on our deathbeds thinking, man, I sure wish, I, I'm sure glad I watched the Pro Bowl. Sports are bad for us, but they are purely bad for us. They are pure because they are thoughtless and utterly selfless. We give them everything and expect nothing but pain in return. In that way, it's really a lot like life. You pour your heart and soul into it, and you're still not likely to get anything out of it. But that's no reason to stop living, and that's no reason to stop cheering. We cheer because our teams are ours, not theirs. We cheer because we must. We would cheer because otherwise we'd have to talk about things that actually matter. And the world is far too terrifying for that. Joining us now is our guest, a longtime suffering fan of the Indiana Pacers, a Hoosier true and true, and a star of the Fox hit show Gotham, Drew Powell. Hey! hey. Sir, sir. Thanks, Paul. Oh, yeah. Good to see you, sir. How's it going? What's up, man? By all means, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is my honor. It is my pleasure. Mm -hmm. It was great the band played me on to Thriller. I get the joke I with the Grundy. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, uh, I don't know if the, the folks at home got to hear that. Well, we had to mute it because of the rights. It's very expensive <laughs> to play Michael Jackson songs. That's true. I actually have Turns to pay $5,000 simply because I said his name. <laughs> um, I'll chip in for that one. So I want to talk to you about that. You, like me, are a fellow Midwesterner. Yes. A displaced Midwesterner. You are from Lebanon, Indiana. Yep. I am from Mattoon, Illinois. I love it. We are, uh, we are both uh, regular. We both... I think we should just stop the whole show and just talk about the Indianapolis airport. It's a fantastic It's a thing. great airport, people. But you are a, uh, a big sports fan, but you, like me, live in a town other than yes. where your favorite sports fan, favorite sports teams are. That's right. And I have found, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, I have found that that has made me almost a bigger fan of the teams. 100%. Because not only, no longer are they just, like when you live in a town, you listen to sports radio and you're like, screw that coach, yeah. screw those guys, trade yeah. the bum. Yeah. But when you're gone, you're like nostalgic about it. Yeah. You're like, oh, I miss my Pacers, I yeah. miss my Illini. Do you find yourself, now that you're now that you're Mr. Mr. Big Shot television guy, Huge. like becoming more uh, connected to your teams? <clears throat> 100%, and it's, be it's, it's I think it's beyond just the sports world. I feel like I have to represent my whole state <laughs> right. by wearing that Colts hat. <laughs> or by wearing my Pacers gear <laughs> at the Nets game, yeah, I have to represent the whole state. That's a lot of pressure. Do you, it's funny because you know you have you have kids. I do. You know, and I have uh, mm. you have one you have a, you have a son. Yeah. Little and boy, I, yeah. I have two boys, and I no longer I, I want them desperately 
to be fans of my yeah. team. Yeah. I don't care literally anything else they do in their life. If their profession is my dad sucks and his name is Will Leach and I hate him, <laughs> I don't know why it's profession. I assume there's a shirt that people see. Yeah. I don't care. But if they want to root for a team other than the Cardinals, that's fine as long as he is the six-year-old willing to get a job and live in another place. <laughs> I've, seen not living with you. I've seen yeah. you. I've seen you uh, at games with your kids. I saw like take them for the first time to a Pacers game. Do yeah. you do, like? I find that's a connection too. Is that like being with my kids and wanting them to care about this thing the way that I care about? What yeah. I'm well, for me, I mean, that's important. It's as important that he hates the Patriots as well. Of course. So of course. That, I just well, want to make sure he that's is an American. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's true. You'll have to work too hard on that one. <laughs> and everybody in Boston just turned the channel. No, uh, please. The, they yeah. shot that television two <laughs> weeks ago. True. That's true. Uh, no, I, it's absolutely true, and, and it's it's funny because I married a, uh, a woman from England, mm -hmm. and we met in Australia, as you do, but she's she's British, you know, and she's a Liverpool supporter in whatever degree, you know, she cares about it, but she is constantly baffled by how much we love sports in this country, <laughs> how much we love sports in my house, and now my son is old enough that he's found, like, the Xbox, and he can play Madden, and he can play the NBA games, and so now he knows the players' names, and now we got to, you know, he got to meet some of these guys, yeah, yeah. and so he is on on another level and she's like I've lost him <laughs> yeah. I've lost yeah. him so she is exactly. she is a little disheartened about this thing but you know it's kind of a it's a rite of passage right does he play the Indiana teams or does he play uh, Los Angeles or New York teams? He, he does he does but but there are times he's he kind of like I think I might want to be a Golden State is that okay yeah like, like nothing okay. no no anti Oladipo stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no no but, no he, uh, he loves he loves the Pacers he, he, and and that's what I love about especially young kids is that they're they don't know the ins and outs and the details yeah. and the contract and the trade deadline they just are fans oh. and they just love it so so it's it's really uh, it's it's fun to kind of relive my my uh, fan experience through his eyes yeah that's part of the problem too is once you know like you can't put the horse back in the yeah. Pandora's box. Yeah. That, that's yeah, exactly I'm how it goes. Sure. You cannot put the yeah. horse back in no, the box. No, you can't. Yeah. And, but you can make him drink out of the box. You can. Uh, but and, you, and if you look him in the mouth. <laughs> yes, exactly. But don't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but for me, like, one of the things, once you know about salary cap, or once you yeah. know about, like, I always think if there's just a league average player, if he's making a lot of money, you hate him because he's not a star. Right. Like, I feel like one of my one of the things I always admire about my dad, and I've tried to instill it in my kids, is my dad. He doesn't pay, pay, pay attention to prospects. He yeah. doesn't pay attention to rookie. He's yeah. just like every new season is Christmas. Yeah. He's like, oh look, who's on my team now? This yeah. is amazing. Absolutely. And I I feel like that's the way we watch sports as kids. And as yep. you get older and you know more and more about it. I feel like sports are set to make you angrier now. Yes. Like everyone's overpaid and they got to get rid it's of It's true, yeah. And Being I, a smarter fan is almost worse. You're right. And also we live in a cynical age. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so like, I, I got this really cool experience. I've, I've become a Mets fan. So sorry about that, uh, Mr. Cardinal. But because I live here now and I love the Mets, you know, back in the, the cocaine Mets days. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's become, a hell of a job. And, and, and they've been really good to us on the show and we've had a lot of fun. So I got to the, see. The cocaine or the Mets? Uh, but, oh, you know, not just the Mets. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know your. Hollywood yeah, excess. Exactly. That was the 80s. Nobody yeah. does that anymore. <laughs> exactly. But uh, I got a chance so, to it's go. It's all prescription now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> but I got the chance to go and uh, sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game at the seventh inning stretch at City Field. Mm. And uh, this was at the end of the season. You know, the Mets had had a rough season, injuries, all that stuff. So there was, you know, the one thing I said to the folks before I started singing was like, you people that are here, you are the true fans. Right, right, if right. you're coming out on a, a, right, a oh. Tuesday night at the end of the, the season <laughs> with a team that's no good, those are true fans. And I really do admire that. And I think that's there's something about that that kind of, uh, to me, speaks to, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a, you know, a Rockwellian, but th there's that, <laughs> that in this in this weird, weird time that we live in now, the, those things that kind of bond us, people that, that commit to their team and they really care about it and it's important to them, like that gives me a little heart. Yeah, it's it's good to know that because uh, most of the time I feel like everyone's yelling at each other in yeah. sports in, in the world. Yeah. Uh, you forget yeah. that like this is supposed to be yeah. fun. This is yeah. supposed to be enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. So um, okay, so we're gonna play a little game. I got some games for okay. you now. Okay, yep. I got some games. Midwesterner to game Midwesterner. Pose. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the, the, this one we call this one fruit, frivolous questions of dubious import. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, exactly. It's, uh, it's a lot of big words. A there. lot of totally unnecessary. Like, you got me <laughs> frivolous and dubious, but nevertheless. We went to college, y'all. Yes, exactly. This is, uh, uh, this is, I'm just reading. Okay, so uh, these are short questions, okay. So, but, but you can answer as long or as short as you'd like. First question, okay, I noticed this here. Are you, you said you talked about being a Mets fan. Are you a Cubs fan 
or are you a Mets fan? Because I saw this tweet that where you were said I was rooting for the Cubs and now I'm rooting for the Mets. Yeah. Uh, you, okay. Is this is this a Holly? This is another Hollywood thing. <laughs> you, you Midwesterners, you you good solid people yeah. until you get to Hollywood and every, it's all just big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all I've big definitely big. become a flip flopper. Okay, but here's in my defense, mm -hmm. I'm from Indianapolis. We yeah. do not have a team. It's true. Therefore, I grew up not supporting a team, but supporting players. Okay. I like Derek Davis, so I root for mm -hmm. the Reds. I like Frank Thomas, so I root for the mm -hmm. White Sox. My first ever game was at Bush Stadium, but all of the uh, all of my true fans that weren't like weren't weren't Cardinal fans were mm -hmm. Cub fans, and I felt for them because they it was just awful, and so I had to support them. And I, for the record, if you go back to the social media, I supported them at the beginning of the season. They won the World Series. I'm not saying I'm responsible. But I'm kind of responsible. I just kind of feel obliged to point out that ever since the Cubs won the World Series, yep. the world has gone to hell, by the way. <laughs> like, immediately. Uh -oh. I'm yeah. just saying, Cardinal mm. fans have been making this argument for a long time. If they won, uh, look what happened. Yep. Okay, do you get great seats? You're on a Fox show, a very successful Fox show. Uh, um, do you get great seats because of Fox now? Do you get fancy uh, Fox seats? Uh, well, you know, I, I'm I, I, not for lack of trying. Right. Um, <laughs> right. I, I definitely let them know. I mean, you know, we've, we've got all these big stars on our show. So, you know, I'm sure Ben McKenzie gets the first call. But I'm always, uh, you know, d telling the folks like, hey, you know, if... Right. If right. a couple of seats come available, the problem is it's all, it's all, all I, I'm going to pick my next show based on what I want to do. Like mm -hmm. if, if it's right. a, if I want to go to the Olympics, I should be yeah. on an NBC show, you know, the World Series is great for Fox, you know, you, you got to pick it. But, but so far they, they've I been smell, good. I smell, I smell an RLS reboot. Ooh, I smell an RLS reboot. Let's do it. What is yeah. Robert, Robert, Robert Wolf? Like, like, yeah. like, like Arliss 2049, <laughs> and he comes back like Harrison Ford. And, Absolutely, I love it. Uh, it's very in right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, okay, better Batman. Okay, better Batman from Indiana history. Okay, better Batman. <clears throat> Larry Bird, Peyton Manning, Steve Alford, or Isaiah Thomas? Oh, these are great questions. I'm better. a serious reporter. So I ask, ask you, questions. You do. You know your stuff. So you're saying of of those gentlemen, who would who be, would be the, the best Batman? Batman? <laughs> the Im the image of Larry Bird in a ba Batman <laughs> suit is just priceless. <laughs> so I'm going to say that for comic effect. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. nothing stranger than yeah. the short shorts, really. I, <laughs> I mean, mean but the, not just the that. The hair, like, he's yeah. the best. I have, mean, you met, have you had a chance to meet Larry Bird yet? Have you met I, Bird? Well, we had this moment. Uh, I, was at, I was at a, a Is basis. he aware of it? Does he, he know of it? Uh, well, <laughs> he gave me the Larry Bird nod. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He gave me the Larry Bird nod oh, and the two true. fingers. Because oh, I was like, enough. Larry Legend! <laughs> <laughs> Which was not didn't look crazy at all. No, no. And he was like, "Yeah." So I got no, the yeah. I got the two fingers. But, but see, the, I feel like you got to say I'm OG on that. I'm Indiana. I'm not a crazy Boston. That's person. right. I'm full. That's on. right. I'm. I've seen I, a picture I love of the hick from French Lick. Yeah, exactly. I've exactly. been to French Lick. Okay. Yes, and I have I have bought beer at French Liquors, which is an actual store. And there. The, and and I'm assuming it was because of Larry Bird, because there's no reason. <laughs> uh, it was actually a Key Club convention. Key Club so. convention. Oh, yeah. that's good. See, kids. Join Even the nerds can make it in Hollywood. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's totally not true, by the way. Um, okay, Joe Buck, broadcaster Joe Buck. I feel like he'd make a great Batman villain. Yeah. Well, what Batman villain do you think he would be? Uh, if he has a, if it's, it's a crossover between... Oh, uh, that's good. Uh, which one talks the most? I feel like uh, Riddler's <laughs> like talking the Riddler? a lot. Riddler? Yeah, he definitely, a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely some Riddler. Uh, yeah, Riddler with the yeah, yeah with a like, solid ego on him. Yeah, uh, that's good. I'll go with Riddler. Okay, yeah, Riddler. That's good. Okay, uh, just I, this is just a theme that we do for all of these shows. Have yeah. you ever had a uh, pink eye like Bob Costas had? Uh, during oh God. 2000? I have had pink eye, yeah. and it's 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 maybe of all I have an eye thing. I don't like things with my eyes, and so pink eye to me is like like pneumonia or something to anyone else. I couldn't actually watch that. It's, Why did you have to do it's that? It's right behind you. No, don't it's, do it's that. Like, it's like Please he's staring at you. Dear kind God. Of. Dear God, and bless his heart, trying to get get through an interview. He looks like something is trying to get he, he out of his it eye. Out. He gutted it out, too, until they were like, enough. <laughs> enough. He, he exists now. Stop. <laughs> uh, did, has Bobby Knight ever thrown a chair at you? Uh, no, but I used to uh, be friends with, or I used to know the guy who was on the line the free throw line as the chair went across. Oh, yes, Steve Reed, yes, who yes. played for Purdue. Mm -hmm. And he, he actually was joined, he, we were members of the same church, of all things, and we had a church league, and Steve Reed joined the church league. And all of a sudden, they decided to put tape down a three-point line, because it wasn't a three-point yeah. line. We won every game by 60 yeah, points. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. It's helpful. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Hoosiers, which is the correct nom nomenclature. I looked I it up. It's not Indianians. Nope. It's not Indian Indians. Nope. It's not Indian Indian Indians. <laughs> it's Hoosiers. Hoosiers. Do you guys still claim Mike Pence? You guys still claim Mike <laughs> Pence? Uh, do I? 
No, just Hoosiers. Hoosiers? Uh, I, I, I cannot speak for the rest okay, of Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I want to talk about a, uh, Joe Hogsett. He's the mayor of Indianapolis. He's okay. a great guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check him out. Okay, I will. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyone, anyone else? <laughs> La <laughs> last political question. Do you think the president maybe tweets too much? Oh, God. Just a little, just oh. maybe just tweets a little bit too much. I just, 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 just make him go away. Just yeah. can, you, can we send him to Sochi? <laughs> yeah, I've been to Sochi. That is a way. <laughs> that is definitely a uh, way. I'm just so fatigued. You're oh, a tall wow. guy. You're a tall guy. Uh, yeah. Everyone in Hollywood must be like shockingly <laughs> short to you. I got that. That is chopped off. <laughs> That's, That's pretty much my life. Yeah. But, and you see what I'm even doing there is yeah. I'm doing the thing which I've tried to t t teach myself not to do, which is b duck the head yes, down. Yes, yes, yes. Which then it looks like I have no neck. So that doesn't work at all. Just stand up and be proud, kids. The joke, of course, is that uh, you're actually five foot four. It's just everyone <laughs> yeah. in Hollywood. And also, clearly, the ugliest. Like, somebody brought <laughs> Lurch to this party of all of these beautiful people. Look at that. That is just absolutely, that's what's great about Hollywood kids. Is that even somebody like me can stand in a line yeah. with all these beautiful people. Yeah, They're also very sweet, by the way. Oh, yeah. Every single one of those people. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's, guys. that's a good show, man. I'm telling you. Thank um, you. Okay. Is it okay that I was rooting for the black guys in Hoosiers? <laughs> it's okay, right? Was, I, was I totally really, get that. Yeah. I totally get that. But I mean, they were the, they were from South Bend. Yeah. They were, they were good. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, totally had to overcome so much more that those guys were like, right? God, like, you are ruining everything I love, <laughs> I Will Leach. Seriously. God, yeah. I never thought about that. Like, they get one thing. They but get Dennis to go Hopper. to the championship game. He was, he was in rehab. Yeah, I know. I Listen, and, I get it. I, they, I would have liked them to have Hickory. Good on Hickory. Just second place. Yeah. yeah. Get one thing. By the way. Like, nope. By the way, take I'm, this I'm changing the subject because you're hurting my heart. Sorry. I have a Hickory jersey but that was sent to me by, by a good friend in Indianapolis, and it's the Paul George. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't wear it again. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then I figured it out. I watched Hoosiers for the mm -hmm. 17th time this year <laughs> yes. already, and we re realized Ollie is number 13. So now I've duct taped over the back, <laughs> and now oh. it just says Ollie. I'm a Problem huge solved. fan of duct taping jerseys. Yep. Hope you like uh, Oklahoma City there, Paul. Yeah, he's going to Los Angeles next year. Anyway, yeah, he is. So. Good um, riddance. I mean, he's freaking brilliant, but good riddance. Do you always find it, I find it weird that Gene Cady looks like the Purdue mascot. Like he does, right? Like they actually look like the. Oh, it's so true. Like the, I assume uh, the mascot did come first. I right? mean, did it? Yeah. And did you ever see? Uh, did, God bless her, her. His wife. Oh. Who looked like Cruella de Vil and would sit right behind mm -hmm. him, behind yep. the bench. She was incredible. Oh, the Just, two of them. I, 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 I interviewed him. I used to work for the Daily Line. I, they're both incredibly sweet yeah. people. Oh, really? Wonderful people. Great but, coach. But cartoon, like certainly, like yeah. cartoonish. Yeah. Uh, they, they, I they, think they they'd appreciate that. Yeah, they could be on Gotham. Okay, so um, <laughs> were you uh, deep down? You have to. I think you can admit this. This is my. This is the greatest talk show ever. Can we just talk about that, like. I mean, look, this was set up This was set up for the, the, the Hoosier boy, uh -huh. Midwest sports fan, but yeah. this is the greatest ever. Yeah. Yeah. I only interview Midwesterners from now on. <laughs> um, okay, uh, admit it. You oh. were rooting for Ron Artest to kick everybody's ass. Oh, 100%. <laughs> but the thing about Ron Artest is... Uh, 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 Metal World Peace. Metal World Peace, sorry. Peace. sorry. Is that he's the guy you root for when he's on your team, and everybody, oh, yeah. and you hate him yeah. if he's not. Kind of like Lance Stevenson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just Lance being Lance. I love me some Lance. <laughs> I love me oh, some Lance. Man. That guy is so much fun. And on, on social media, like at least three times a day, he has an Instagram story where he's just looking at the camera while he drives, <laughs> rapping to some song. Yeah. He's just like freaking knows all the words. Yeah. Yep. I, I love me some Lance. I, I, and by I, the way, I, can I just tell you, my son, please, please. My son uh, is into Xbox, much, uh, much to my wife's chagrin, but he was playing, and he was the Pacers, and I'm in the other room, and I'm listening to him, and, I, and he hits a shot. He's like, oh, that's just Lance being Lance. <laughs> oh, oh, I was like, God. little tear. Oh. Just a little tear. Honestly, yep. children of the future. Yep. Give I them hope it. and let them lead the way. <laughs> um, okay, you have been to the Indianapolis 500, I assume, many oh, yeah. times. I've been to many times myself. Yep. Who's the best band you ever saw on Carb Day? Ooh, that's a great question. Boy, that is deep. That's a deep dive. Well, I'm telling you, I'm by, <coughs> I, these are my Midwest. Uh, you do your work. This is the full deal. Um, you know, I saw last last year or two years ago, I guess, uh, which it's, it, I thought it was going to be horrible, but I saw Journey with the new, with the, the non Steve Perry. I'm a Steve well, yeah, Perry of guy. Of course, of course, of course. But this dude, the, 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 the guy that they got to replace him, sounds just like him. So it's like every one of those songs was spot on. Fine, so yeah. th they get the nod for that. They get the nod. Okay. Uh, last question. Speaking of the, the Indianapolis 500, yep. I would love it if you could 
if you could chug the milk. This part that'd always be great. creeped me out. Like, you know, they, they've been sitting there in that car for three hours. Oh, yeah, this has been sweating here. Sweating everything outside their body, and now they got to drink this. How long has this been here? I have to say. Is that lukewarm? I didn't even know it was here. So it was probably <laughs> from months ago. Fortunately, I can't get it open. Oh, so I just wish there was someone big and strong. Oh, I got I arthritis, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, yeah. That's, Grundy's that is famous great. for that. Um, okay. You, you, wow, it's, really good. Is, it's hard, it, right? It really is on there. It's hard. Aha, uh -huh. see? We're, <laughs> we're going to need a mom to get this taken care of. I'm sure Batman is terrified right now yeah. of Grundy being able. There you go. Go. Oh, that's off. Yeah. That's definitely off. <laughs> yeah, that's that that's is... curdled. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. Oh, oh. there's actually a. It's, it's actually fine. A mummified grasshopper. Apparently, <laughs> the, the, the dissecting animals. Okay, <clears throat> uh, one more, a couple more games for you. We have I love it. This is a game we like to call. Let's play a game that's actually just an excuse to watch some videos so we make sure the show has some propulsive moments. Ooh. That's what we like to call it. sounds this game. very Okay, so this game, so fandom has been the key to yep. the kind of theme of this show. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch a video. Okay. And you're going to tell me, this excitable fan, whether or not they are watching a championship game or a non championship game. Okay. It's really just an excuse to watch the videos, but just play I along. Love it. All right. I'm okay. With it. First up, this is a. <clears throat> This is my name. Why? Why? No, do it. No. Is that guy watching a championship game or not watching a championship <clears throat> game? Based on his poor girlfriend's reaction in the corner, who was just like, you know, that's just Lance being Lance. I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Okay, let's watch the rest of the video and see if that reveals oh, the that answer. <laughs> that, that's the first off, that's not a champion, that's not a championship game. It was a championship game. But there's nothing better in the world. I can't think of anything that sums up the f sports fan experience better than it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Because you know what? It's not. It's theirs. No. It's theirs. So that was the Freaking 2000. Case Keenum. Seriously. That was the 2013 wild card loss to the Green Bay oh, Packers. That's not actually the murdering of his family. Um, okay, next up we have. Oh, she dumped his ass. Yeah. That's his grandmother's table. That's, that's your context. Oh, really? This is his grandmother's he's table. He's not even at his own table? Yeah, he's not at his own table. Okay, guy, guy like well, that's got a table. Seek help, friend. Um, it's been five years. I'm sure he's very mature now. Um, okay, next it, we have a we have a hockey fan. Uh, is this for uh, during the Stanley Cup or not during the oh, Stanley God, Cup? Oh, God, hockey fan. <laughs> Okay, is that during the Stanley Cup or not during the Stanley Cup? I'm just gonna say during. Okay, let's. I'm gonna. This we have a visual answer for this one. Take it away. Yo, yo. we're four points out, man. They're four points We're out of four. Points out no. of the no. That is the joke there. No. He is very excited because he is four points no. out. He's a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. No. Who is just four points out of the playoffs. Okay, our last one. God bless him. God bless him. Is this Cleveland fan celebrating a championship or not a championship? Do it again. Do it again. No. 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 If it's a Cleveland fan, it's not a championship. <laughs> he, I think he is, in fact, celebrating a championship. And you can tell because, as you'll see, he puts the cherry on top. No. That is America. My favorite part about that part, my my favorite part of that part of the video is like that's actually that's a risk to toss. Yeah. Because not only are you have, you're obviously gonna be sick, but yeah. you gotta dry cleaning. It's gonna be a mess <laughs> if you miss. I mean it's gonna be a mess I if you mean, miss. I mean, what does it take to get you into that kind of place? Cleveland winning a championship. This is you know what, what fandom is. I'm almost gonna let him have that one. Listen, Cleveland. listen, when you're a fan God of the blood. St. Louis Cardinals, like I am, and you have as many championships <clears> as you do, you understand that the only way to truly celebrate you is by eating them. horse manure off the street. <laughs> As if, like, if it's purely f free range horse manure, yeah. it's like clean, it's like uh, uh, organic. Is there any truth to the rumor that the, the Browns have now assigned him to a, uh, a, yeah, yeah, a, yes. a contract? Yes, he is. He's, he's part, a big he's boy. Part of the, he's yeah. part of the run. So I want to tell you a little bit about, about Gotham a little bit before yeah. you go to the, the last thing. I have, I'm trying to say I've watched it. Sometimes, you know, people go on talk shows and yeah. they're like, so your show is yeah. Gotham, <laughs> and I enjoy your show as Groom Day. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What is it like with the man who is a bat? <laughs> uh, but I actually, I'm trying to say, I 
shit. I've actually seen ever. I've seen you make the transition from Butch over to Grundy and right. the whole deal. And it's funny because you started kind of on the show as you were not one of the major players. Kind of initially, you were. You kind of yeah. one of the things I liked about your character. You kind of snuck up. You were the heavy, but you kind of yeah. snuck into the cast a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, it, thank God, uh, Bruno Heller, who created the show, told me that early on. He's like, listen you know, your character is going to be a slow burn. <laughs> so everybody's going to think that you're nothing. And by the end of this first season, you know, you, 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 I think the phrase he used was, people underestimate Butch until it's too late. Right, right. And so I knew that going in. Otherwise, it would be like, what am I doing here? Because for the first season, I commuted. I flew back and forth from L.A. to New York. Oh, wow. So it was a commitment, you know, for my family and for everything. So, um, But I believed in Bruno because he's a smart man. And I, I Danny Cannon, like our, our guys, I knew the show was going to be good. And it's Batman, right? Yeah, right. So um, it, it was fun. It was frustrating, but fun to kind of watch Butch so sneak up on people. So you knew, you knew the first yeah. season that you were going to be Grundy. He, well, no, I didn't know about Grundy. Oh, you just do the part was going to so, be yeah, So yeah, so that was okay. just in terms of, but but the Grundy thing was to, took me totally by surprise. I kind of dropped it uh, in season two, and I kid you not, uh, my son got a Happy Meal uh, from a restaurant that serves children's meals mm -hmm. and had a uh, the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Exactly. And so he got a, a, it was a DC thing. I think it was Batman, Batman uh, thing. And, and he got a Solomon Grundy doll. Oh. And I'm like, hmm. That's an interesting. Maybe it's a sign. And so I said the next day at work to Bruno, I'm like, you know, Butch could be Solomon Grundy. And he's, he gave me this look kind of like Kramer and Simon. Like, <laughs> and then we never spoke of it yes, again. Yeah. And then cut to the end of last season. And I get a call at 9 p.m. And it's John Stevens, our, our new right. kind of showrunner. The guy's taking over. And, and he's like, so three things. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched uh, all of season three. Uh, you're going to get shot in the head. Literally shot in the head. Literally like, shot I did think in the head. Yeah. I, did th I did think you were gone. Yeah, yeah. My phone was acting up that uh, yeah. during the finale that, that uh, year. Uh, last year, but uh, and he's like, but you, we're gonna bring you back as Solomon Grundy, and I, I was so excited because yeah. that's, you know, that's a yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, also you gotta feel like I, I kind of nailed that part, right? Like, it's, yeah, not like yeah. it's not like like if you get, like, you know what? We're not sure that it, Drew's doing great, <laughs> but let's give him, let's give him one let's more throw chance. Him a bone. Like, like yeah. clearly you're doing well. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're doing well if they, if I they, was they truly great. honored, and it's been a fun. It's been a, it's been taxing, you know. Like I've I've had to do this whole kind of workout regimen. I mean, it's it's you get your attention when they're like so you're gonna come out of the water naked yeah. uh, or mostly naked mm -hmm. uh thank god for network uh, sensors but you're talking uh, what our producers told you before the show, <laughs> yeah, exactly right? yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah yeah luckily uh i won that battle for for your viewers at home but so for now but for now <laughs> exactly come on <laughs> but no it's been great it's been so much fun and and the back half of season four so you're all caught up so I'm yeah not i'm caught up you. i'm caught but up. you know we started up again march 1st uh 8 7 central mm -hmm. on fox um but the back half is great because jerome is back yeah. And uh, we all know and love Jerome yes. as the prototypical Joker type. Okay. Uh, we don't know yeah, exactly, exactly what he is. He's, he's not officially he's the not Joker. Officially the Joker, he's but Joker adjacent. Well, I don't care what he's doing. You know, yes. I finally got to, to have a, a scene with him, yeah. uh, which is a tease for what's to come. And uh, it was fun to watch him work. But also, there, there's I, I could just speak for myself. Like, there's some interesting stuff with Grundy coming up, uh, and uh, perhaps a, a, an alliance with an old friend. So all right. duly noted. All right, so Gotham about. eight seven. Uh, 8, 7 Central on F Fox. Fo Fox. Uh, Fox. 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 F-O-X. Yes. F-O-X. It's called. The, it's the Simpsons channel. It's the, it's the Simpsons channel. That's yeah. right. That's <laughs> Fox turned into, <laughs> turned into hardcore porn so quickly. <laughs> That's my favorite Simpsons jokes about Fox. Okay, we have one last thing we're going to do. It's uh, basically, it's called, How Fast Can You Say Things on the Show with Will that We're On Right Now? Love that. It's basically Outburst. Remember the old game Outburst oh, where you yeah. have like 10 questions? Okay. Absolutely. So we're going to put 20 seconds on the clock. All right. <clears throat> you have uh, to say as many of these as you can. We give you a category and we'll say ding and there's a clock is counting. You know. Okay. Okay. Give me the names <clears throat> of human beings who have played Batman or voiced Batman in the canon of Batman history. Okay. 20 seconds on the clock. Yep. Is that go? Go. Uh, Michael Keaton. Uh, yes. Val Kilmer. Yes. George Clooney. Yes. Uh, uh, Will Arnett. Yes. Uh, 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 Christian Bale. Yes. Uh, uh, Adam West. Yes. And um, uh, uh, what's his name? The great voice of the Batman guy, Kevin Conroy. Yes. And how many do I have left? You have uh, one, two, three left. Ding, Tom. Ah, so you so got close. George Clooney, Val Kilmer, Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, Adam West, Conroy, Arnett. You missed Lewis G. Wilson, who played him in the 1943 Columbia. You lost Ben Affleck, because everyone forgets <laughs> that Sorry, Ben Affleck. Ben. 
Yeah, Here it's just not, it's not, it's, it's, it's not working. He knows it. Sorry. He knows it. He God knows bless it. him. And uh, there's a guy Hell here named director. David Mazzucci. Oh, jeez. Who is, I don't know who that person is. I've never oh, seen Oh, man, I'm going to hear about that name one. before. He is, of course, plays a young Bruce Wayne Bruce on Wayne. Fox's Gotham. Yeah. Eight to seven. He's not Batman yet. He's not Batman yet. He's, but he's, it's coming. Yes, he's bad boy. He's, he's just a creepy guy he's bad from boy. the Weekly World News. Sir, yeah. thank you so much. I this had a wonderful time chatting. Pleasure. Make sure to watch Gotham and come back for the next show. And stay here at SI.com for all of our original programming. There's good stuff. You can watch like the cutting edge. The Thanks, cutting Paul. Edge Paul. Play us out, Paul. Paul has been staring at us. Paul Schaefer. He doesn't have anything else time. to do. I feel very bad for him.